Right, welcome to Sunny Bristol. Now, today we're gonna crack on about wheel top. Now, I made a video ages ago, and then basically, like, my bike got blur, why crash, etc. etc. Anyway, I actually end up riding wheel top for like two weeks, and I've got some big talking about it because wow, wow, wow. We'll go through maybe just how it shifts now, and then I'll talk about the setup later because wow, the setup actually blows your mind if you're used to SRAM or Shimano. But overall, not as bad as you think it's gonna be but still would never buy the thing, just to make that clear. Right, so first up, we'll kind of just look at the aesthetic of, of the wheel top. Obviously, this bike is pretty fried at the moment. There's a lot of dirt on it. But I don't think it looks too bad, the aesthetic. Like, this is pretty big, but apart from that, it's not actually too bad. Here's the shifters assembled. Sorry about the bar tape. I'm, I'm not very good at wrapping bar tape. You may be able to tell. Anyway, I actually think they're not that bad. Like, they look similar to SRAM. In terms of the brakes, uh, they're not horrific either. Like, uh, this one I haven't really bled, so it's not great. But the other one's actually decent. Um, pretty easy to set up, in my opinion. The only thing is this massive issue is this thing here is, like, full ridiculous. You can kind of see here, it flicks back so much. So when you're trying to bleed stuff, that you, you, like, have to lift this up. And, like, okay, yeah, I'm pretty small. I don't have very strong hands. But, like, whoa, it's so odd. This is, like... Full gas, everything I got, and I can barely lift it up with one hand. So it's an absolute ball ache to, to bleed. Anyway, what we're going to do first, this is going to be pretty difficult because I don't have many hands, uh, need more hands or an assistant. Anyway, we're going to go through the rear shifting first because I do think that is, uh, is not horrific. Right, so here we go with the shifting on the rear. Now, first of all, it's set up the wrong way around, so I'll show you that in a minute. But it's like the opposite of Shimano. So that's big, big. Does slightly rub. It skips two then. But then it's actually like not bad. This took so long to set up. I reckon hours to set up. And then it like does go down. You can see it's a little bit slow down there. But it's not too bad. Like this bit here in the middle. I reckon not that bad. Right. That's not horrific. It does the job. Now we're going to go through the front shifting. Now... When you see the setup of this, you'll realize why the front shifting is an absolute disaster. But anyway, we'll kind of do like, this is like a, a reasonable place where you're gonna do front shifting. So we'll just kind of show how it is. Like in the big dog, it's not too bad. It does shift, it just is mega slow. And in the big dog, you can see like, it's a little bit slow to get on. Like it takes two attempts. So it's not too bad. I just think it's a bit slow. If we go further down the cassette, it's kind of just a bit different. Like, yeah, you're probably not going to be shifting that. But it's better to get on, but it's worse to, like, go into the smooring. So, overall, not horrific. I actually think the brakes are decent. Um, but, yeah. I'd say one other thing to consider is just the actual gap between the rotors. So, you can see here, the rotor and the brake pad, minimal gap between it. So if any of your rotors are slightly bent, it can be difficult uh, to set up. Luckily, mine wasn't too bad, but again, it's something to consider. It's just not that mega polished. All right, so in terms of setup, it's not too bad. Most of it's done through the app. However, there's like this weird bolt here where you need to set it so it's like in line with the outer shifter. And I don't know if this is some Shimano trademark, but it's pretty wild. Anyway, what you're going to see, though, is that when you start shifting on the big ring, sorry, in the, on the rear, the front mech then shifts, but you can see it only shifts like at one point in the, in the big thing. So if you go down, you can see it, it's gonna shift in. But then when you go all the way up, it only shifts there. So what that means is that it's really, really hard to get it to stop rubbing. It is possible but it's like really difficult. And that's kind of one of my big issues with the wheel top. Right, so here is wheel top app. You can see I need to update it. It does some stuff about changing casual mode. Anyway, you can see you swipe left, swipe right. You see the battery. I've changed it to this racing mode in casual mode. Uh, then you can click onto the equipment list. If you the, click the top uh, top right, it does wild stuff. It doesn't actually get you where you need to go. So anyway, what you want to do really is look at the bottom right so we're now actually trying to add people sorry which is also difficult uh which is the blue bluetooth button again we're finally in now so it does take sometimes some time you've got to click the buttons and make sure it works but anyway we're going to go into 
going to go into the settings so you can see you click debug then you go into replace cassette you can change the speed which is quite good uh but there's just it's not the english isn't great they really need to pay someone to translate it like because it's kind of carnage trying to remember it. anyway as you can see you can change the cassette from 9 to 12 whatever then you go into initial calibration uh don't do any writing cheers boys uh this isn't too bad this is kind of like you just figure out on the front mech you need to like align as i was saying with the the actual screwdriver and then you basically can just change it slightly this is the bit that's bananas there's some gear value at the bottom for the rear mech and you change that and then that is like how you how it shifts so it is good but it doesn't change in real time like shimano so it's really hard to do this is even more carnage don't touch this on the front mech you will mess it up the rear one you can do you can see you can change numbers but the whole thing is so complicated there's no real instructions it's just it's just chaos right so sorry for that video not the best i've ever made but we will we keep trying what i am good at though is uh reviewing products in terms of writing them now i've written a lot of things i've written sram etap 11 speed shimano jury it's a romano Ultegra 12 speed and also sram force axis so we're in a lot of different group sets i've set them all up uh myself so i built the bike same with the wheel top built that myself so i have quite a lot of experience now Building it up, I'd say very similar to Shimano. It's got the olive and barb system, which is fine. It uses mineral oil, which I do quite like. It doesn't really matter that much. Mineral oil is just a little bit less stress if you get on your hands. Uh, so that is good. Bleeding wise, yeah, fine. Pretty similar to Shimano. It uses like standard bleed kit. I wouldn't really say it was too, too difficult to set up. In terms of the actual gears, though, I would say very, very difficult to set up. Uh, perfectly. Now that took me maybe half an hour to do, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't sound that bad, but SRAM is definitely more of a ball ache on the old axis because it didn't have the auto trim. So you actually had to do it yourself with the uh, high low adjustment on the front mech. And then the SRAM on the rear, I find really easy. Uh, you barely need to change it on SRAM. I, I found that really good both on 11 and 12. Shimano is different. Um, the 12 speed stuff, I've never used 11 speed DI2, but 12 speed stuff is really easy to do. Again, like the app, you just, it works you through. It's really obvious on the front mech, you know, you set the high, the high gear, the low gear, and then also when you're cross chaining and that's really easy and it's like, anyone can do that. And then the rear mech again, it, it's it's really good. So I don't know if there's copyrights, but the, the way the wheel top one works, there's no instructions, it makes no sense. There's too much adjustability. And I think what it should have in my mind is like normal punter mode where it's just easy to set up and then like, I want to get my gear shifting perfectly, like whatever stupid mode that people maybe want, because maybe you do want it. But for me, it was an absolute ball ache to do the front mech. I, found I took ages doing it. And then the rear shifting was better. Um, again, like you have to align it with the bottom with the screw to make sure it works. I don't know. It is not a product to use if you do not enjoy tinkering. And I do not enjoy tinkering. So that is one kind of downside. The upsides are it does shift, which is, might sound odd, but like it does work. Like when you click the button, you do shift into the big ring or the small ring. Uh, and then also on the rear, like you do shift. So in that sense, like it does everything you need it to do. Yeah, the performance is bad. It's slower than Shra SRAM and Shimano. The front mech is obviously like just not very good. If you're out the saddle passioning and want to lob in the big ring, well, it just won't work. Uh, you know, it will it'll probably fly off. It's just really slow. So in that sense, yeah, okay, it's not great. I think the biggest issue with it, something like I'm running it very long uh, because I don't really want to like riding it that much and I've got a nicer bike to ride. But the question is like I've got a winter bike, so like an L that is coming and I can either build up a SRAM, which I already have, or I can use wheel top. Am I going to use wheel top? No. And the reason I won't use wheel top this winter, although it's kind of cool, there's lots of different things, I just don't back reliability. I've gone through every single component on my Shimano one has broken except the right shifter from my canyon that i bought like two years ago on sram i went through five rear max on the 11 speed 12 speed the blip box failed on me so what i'm trying to say is both the shimano and sram issue their stuff breaks and wheel top like it's just gonna break like you just know it is and it's nothing to do with wheel top it's just to do with like the general facts of electronics on bicycles do break and i just don't back that it's going to be an easy fix it's going to take ages to try and sort out so I'd rather just stick with something that's probably going to break less. And if it does, I can just message the people I bought it from, which is in the UK, and go, my rear shift is broken, my front shift is broken, and they can fix it. And it's just so much easier. So that, I think, is ultimately the biggest thing is, like, from a from my own perspective, it's like, 
I don't back for it to be very reliable. So if I don't, then I'm just not really going to use it. And I think if I was going to buy it, I would only buy it if I wanted to do something wild. So if I want to run rim brake electronic 13 speed, yeah, I'd buy it maybe because it's the only option. Or if you wanted to run seven speed hydraulic disc, I would also buy it. I think the issue is it's not much cheaper than 105 and it just doesn't really have like the proven thing. Like all the reviewers like me have just got given in it. No one's really given a very honest review. I don't think anyone's ridden it enough. Like in my mind, like I normally crack two, three, two to three thousand Ks a month. So actually I would be good at reviewing stuff, but wheel top, I'm just not riding on my nice bike. So I'm not ever going to crack that many hours in. And like other people, they do like a two month review and they ride like a thousand K. So it's basically irrelevant. Like 500 K in a month is like, you're just not actually like getting through enough kilometers to review it. So what you really need is kind of just like general group analysis. And the place that is that is on the wheel top Facebook users app or users group, which I'm on. And that is actually what convinced me to kind of like sum up this video is really that like there people are having so many issues like people are having oh this is broken and yeah like wheel top has fixed it a lot which is good on them but also what you expect but that in my mind is kind of like the biggest thing is like the the, the there's no one on youtube is really tested enough in my mind and so you go on the users group and people are having a lot of issues so i just think in my head why would you risk it like it just doesn't make sense unless you're a genuine enthusiast about group sets or want something very niche that wheel top can offer you it just makes no sense because you're just going to pay a significant amount of money it's not that cheap and like there's a good chance it doesn't work as found out in this group so that will kind of be my conclusion i think maybe in like 10 years time it'll be really good and maybe in two years time it'll be really good uh so that was kind of my thoughts i don't think it's an issue at the moment i just think the reliability is going to be the problem and it's not cheap enough uh to justify the potential reliability issues that you're going to have and warranty issues um so yeah that's kind of my conclusion but I am surprised it works. I think that is the, the biggest thing. It does actually genuinely work. So that is that is impressive.